Ning adlaw everyone! Welcome to Cordopia TV. If you are new to my channel, my name is Cor and I'm your Bistet Nurse from Southeast England. Before I will start the vlog for today, I would like to thank my subscribers. We are now 2,400 subs. So if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. So in today's vlog, I'm going to share to you five things that are worth to know before you work in a care home. So disclaimers first, all the things that I'm going to share to you is based on my personal experience and in my own opinion, okay? So let's start. Okay, so top of my list is about workload. So people think that since working in a care home, there are only limited clinical tasks to do, they think that, oh, working in a care home is an easy PC job, when in fact, it's not. Yes, I won't deny it, there are chill days in a care home, but since most of the cases, there's only one nurse to handle one unit. So it means you have to manage your time wisely in order for you to accomplish things within the day with very minimal supervision from your superiors and also help from other nurses. So you have to do it on your own. So let's take as an example, what was my workload in my previous employer and my workload now in my current employer. So in my previous job, there are only two nurses handling 27 residents and that was two units. So imagine two nurses during the day handling 27 residents, but at nighttime, there's only one nurse to handle all of them. In my current job, there are four nurses, four units, and the total number of our residents in our care home, if we are full, is 70. So in my unit at the moment, I am handling 16 residents. Other nurses are handling 15 or 21. So if my unit is full capacity, I am handling 17 residents and I do have four care staff with me. So what I have mentioned earlier is the staffing during the day. At night time, there are two nurses and six carers handling the whole building. So at night time, since there are only limited nursing responsibilities for the night nurse to do, they are helping the carers and doing personal care. So that includes um, continence care and the washing and dressing of the residents. So I know that I have shared this with you before in my previous vlog. I have detailed what are the responsibilities of nurse in a care home and especially the routine of a day nurse. But just to give you a quick picture to differentiate the workload of a day nurse versus a night nurse in a care home. So in the day shift, um, there's a lot of things for a nurse to do apart from just completing what is written in the diary because there are unpredictable things that could happen in a day. So you will do the medications. Yeah, that's part of it. That's part of the routine anyway. Aside from that, in most cases, the day nurses are responsible in making referrals to healthcare professionals or specialists if they have any concern about a resident. And it's also the time to chase medications if there are pending medications or if there are new medications to start. And it's also the time to update families if there are any changes about the resident. And also part of the routine of the day nurses are to update the documentation like care plans and what else? Do some wound dressings. So as for the night nurses, their main responsibility is to do the medications. So I am speaking on what is happening in our care home. So since there are only two nurses to handle all the residents during the night, and they're not only functioning as a nurse but also as a carer, so we only um, hand over to them only few nursing tasks. So for example, updating documentations like care plans, or if we haven't done the due wound dressings for the day, then we pass it to them. So hopefully you have an idea of what's the workload in a care home. But what I have shared to you might not be applicable to other care homes, especially when it comes to staffing. Because the staffing depends on the dependency of the resident. So there are three levels. Um, there is low, medium, and high dependency. So this is where the management decides on how many staff they have to allocate in the unit depending on the level of dependency of the residents. The second topic that I would like to share to you is about the working environment. This factor plays a huge role when it comes to determining your contentment with your job. So if you are working alongside with a supportive and positive team, then consider yourself lucky. However, 
if you're working or surrounded with people who are poorly motivated and lacks the passion towards their craft, this might also affect your attitude towards your work. But you know, at the end of the day, even if you're working in a toxic vibe environment, you can always make a change. You can start by setting example to your colleagues. Show them your dedication towards work and spread positivity. You'll never know that this might create an impact with their behavior towards work. Allow me to share you this. I have been receiving messages on my Facebook page asking for my comment or opinion about a care home versus another care home or one company versus another company. I cannot really comment on that. Not unless you immerse in that workplace, then you would understand what's the working environment like. So I would always resort into suggesting for you to, re to research further by asking feedbacks from the staff who work in that workplace through searching through Facebook groups or to check their website or by checking out the reviews on carehome.co.uk website. Because I don't have a vast experience in a care home. Honestly, I just started my career in 2019 here in the UK. So I'm not an expert on those things. So I would always go to the safe side for you to research about the care home because it is a very um, tricky question if you ask me what's the working environment like in this care home or which one is better yeah which company should i choose i cannot i cannot answer for that I cannot give you a guarantee which one is good the third topic that we're going to discuss is about flexibility so every pre-registered nurse i'm speaking in a care home setting has to work as a carer whilst attending for their OSCE trainings or waiting for their OSCE exam. Based on my experience, I struggled finding time to study during my days off, although there are allotted um, study days and OSCE trainings because, you know, caring job can be exhausting. But you have to take advantage of this experience because this will give you a better understanding of what are the needs of your residents that you will be looking after once you get your NMC pin. So once you pass your OSCE and acquire your NMC pin, you still have to function beyond your job description every once in a while. So it's not because you're already a registered nurse, then you will be working as a registered nurse only. You have to adjust according to the needs of the care home. So for example, if you are um, overstaffed for nurses, but you are short for care staff, then one of the nurses have to help on the floor and function as a carer. So that's what flexibility means. You have to be sensitive on the need of the surroundings, on the need of the floor, for you to have a smooth shift. So once in a while, um, you will not be working as a nurse. You can be a, a senior carer or a care staff, or you can be a kitchen supervisor or even a laundry staff. And this is the reality. I have even a friend who is now a home manager. He shared to me about his experience that he is either a nurse, a deputy manager, or the kitchen supervisor, a domestic, or the laundry staff. If you want to have a, a smooth um, working environment, you have to lend a hand. At the end of the day, um, all of you will be affected if you are a short staff. So that's what I mean about flexibility. That's the reality. Not only in the care home but maybe in the hospital settings as well here in the UK. So let's proceed to my topic number four, and this is based on my opinion. Some elements of the care home industry are associated to hospitality job. And I can say this because I used to work in hospitality for almost a year here in the UK. So take this as an example. In the hospitality industry, there is a golden rule that the customer is always right. Although it's not fully applicable in the healthcare industry, but you know, the concept is almost similar. Our aim in the care home sector is to keep our service users or residents and their significant others as happy and contented as possible. So just like the hospitality industry, you will encounter unsatisfied customers. So in the care home industry, you will have to learn how to deal with complaints and how to address conflicts. Lastly, both of these industries, healthcare and hospitality, are aiming to get five stars and good reviews. So in a current perspective, we are always driven by positive feedbacks from residents and their families. And apart from that, if there will be a like an inspection from Care, Care Quality Commission, we are always aiming for um, a good or outstanding rating. 
Lastly, the reason I can say that the elements of the care home industry versus the hospitality job are mostly identical because the ultimate goal is to provide customer satisfaction through delivering the highest quality of care or services that is worth the money. My last topic, but definitely not the least, looking after yourself. There is a motto that you cannot give what you don't have. So you cannot provide the highest care possible to your residents if you don't know how to look after your own welfare. You should always find time for yourself. Enjoy your days off or nourish yourself with good food and find new hobbies that could improve yourself. Remember, don't let your cup run empty. I hope you find value from this vlog of the day. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, put down on the comment section or you can message me on my Facebook page, Cordapia TV. Once again, thank you for watching guys. I'll be seeing you soon. Bye-bye!